Okay, hello, and uh, cheers, Dan, for a very great intro to my talk, um, I suppose. So, um, a bit of background. My name's Matt Hamilton. I work for a company called Enquos. We make a health and fitness uh, nutrition tracking system. And I'm in the lovely position after spending about 15 years in an agency environment, not mobile, but, but web, and having the same sort of issues of how do you get a client to pay for things like testing and, and um, automation and things like that, to now being in the environment where basically my, one of my main jobs and roles within the organization is to deal with the automation and the build servers and all that kind of stuff. So I've set up uh, a build server for both our Android and iOS projects that builds everything and does all of those things that you know, Dan has been talking about using Jenkins, uh, Fastlane on iOS as well. Um, and some other bits and pieces so that whenever you commit some code, um, it gets built. Whenever we have a feature branch pushed, it builds that feature branch, creates a whole new packaged um, app ready to install from that feature branch you can install and start testing. And uh, even on the, on the Android project, if you, if you uh, break a, a lint rule, it, it, will, it will fail it and notify everybody on Slack. So um, yeah, we, we, we kind of, yeah, embarrassment driven development as well, I suppose. Um, <laughs> But anyway, one of, the, one of the great things is we built this ourselves. So you know, we know it pretty well, and we can be very flexible as to what it does. Uh, one of the disadvantages is that every time uh, the, the, the juggernaut that is Apple or Google decide to change direction slightly, we've got to be aware of that. Otherwise, everything breaks. So one of the recent breakages was to do with Xcode. So Xcode 8 uh, was released a few weeks ago, a um, month ago maybe now. And uh, there was a problem originally for um, iOS developers. If you used Xcode and you're, you're building things, so uh, apps have to be signed, digitally signed, so that Apple can ensure that uh, the app that you're installing is actually a legitimate app and uh, that it can go to the right devices and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Google have something similar for Play Store, not nearly as draconian. But the problem was is that occasionally it would all just go a bit tits up in, 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 in Xcode and it would be very unhappy. And you get a dialog box that, like this that basically says, blah, 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 scary, scary stuff, da, 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 fix issue, right? And so basically you just keep mashing that button until it works again, um, which was great. It had its role and it did work again. However, a while later you'd go and look in your, um, in your developer portal and you have these things called provisioning profiles and a provisioning profile is the thing that kind of ties uh, the certificate and the app and the people that are allowed to install it all together. You know, if it was an SQL thing, it would be the join table that relates everything together. And you would get a whole bunch of duplicate stuff there. And you go, what the hell's that? And it says, well, it's managed by Xcode. But you go, yeah, 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 but what is it? And every time somebody changed something, that dialog box would come up, blah, blah. So um, Apple bought out a new thing with Xcode 8, which is this thing called automatic signing, um, which you kind of say, well, it was automatic before, but it was automatic-ish. This is actually truly automatic, which is great, apart from when it's not. Um, so it's great from a developer point of view in that it removes a lot of the hassle. Um, when you go to sign something, instead of that fix issues thing, it kind of does it all for you. It doesn't start spewing additional um, provisioning profiles all over your um, developer portal. It keeps them all internally to Xcode to, to you so you don't end up you know, messing around with anybody else in your development team. But the problem being is if you actually want to do it on a continuous integration server or build server, sort of running headless builds automatically whenever somebody does a, a check-in, it doesn't really work because the automated bit requires you to actually be running Xcode and pushing buttons rather than a script doing things in the background. So just to give you a bit of an overview, this is more of a technical talk than some of the previous talks, um, there's a bunch of uh, variables here, uh, settings here within some of the um, uh, iOS development uh, sort of files. And Within Xcode 7, uh, you set a code signing identity. So you said this is iPhone distribution and the provisioning profile, which was some big long UUID. Uh, if somebody goes into the developer portal and, and changes something, you get a new UUID for a new profile and suddenly your builds break. In Xcode 8, instead of specifying by that, um, you say this is your development team. So in, in, in Apple, you have a notion of a team in their, their developer portal. That is the ID of of my company's development team. 
and uh, you could say, okay, this is the provisioning profile we want to use. And if I make any changes, it may end up with a new UUID, but that doesn't matter. It'll, it'll, it'll be okay. So if you set the right things within Xcode 8, it will just take care of it. If you want to do it manually, though, through a build server, because that won't work, you have to then set um, specifically the code signing identity. You have to put the provisioning profile in as a UUID. And importantly, you have to leave these other two blank. So this is kind of like the, the, the master matrix. If you're trying to do this, um, look this up and that'll, that'll do it. Um, bum, bum, bum. Right, yes, I should have gone through them. Anyway, the one nasty bit is that you can't, there's, there's this automatic provisioning profile that's set in the, in the um, project file. And on build, we have to basically go and change that automatic to manual. So this is just a, a said script. This is just a search and replace. There's no nice way of doing it, unfortunately, as far as I'm aware. So we, when we run it, we just change that project PBX file and say, no, it's not automatic, it's now manual. And the whole point of this being is we override any settings that the developer has set. So it doesn't matter what the developer has done, when the build server builds it, it will build what we want, sign it with what we want, regardless of what they've done. Um, and to do that, we use these things called XC config files. And these are the various bits um, in there that we put in. So the provisioning profile specifier, which is the bit you use for the automated one, is now blank because we're not doing it automated. Um, the provisioning profile is actually the provisioning profile and what's called the wrapper extension, which expands to be this provisioning profile app, because otherwise, if you don't do that, it'll try and do it for pods as well. So if you've got third party um, pods installed, it will try and sign them, it'll get all upset with you. So uh, this is a little workaround for that. So if that evaluates, if that wrapper extension evaluates to app, it knows it's signing the app rather than the pods. So that becomes true. And then that is where it finds the provisioning profile. And then the code signing identity is the, the full name according to, to um, the developer portal. Um, provisioning profile specifier left blank. That's what I've said because we, that's only used in automatic provisioning. That's the indirection I just talked about there. Um, yeah, the whole point being is that we override anything the developers say, so they can put whatever they want in and, and hit stuff and screw it up, and the build server should recover and do it. And we have a separate XE config file for development, feature, and release builds. So one of these for each one, and the main thing being is they have a different um, profile UUID there, so um, they'll be linked to a different uh, bundle identifier. Uh, so one will be com end quotes total health develop, one will be com end quotes total health feature, or, or, or release. So uh, I think that's it. Yes. <laughs> Any questions? Got for, yeah, question. We've got two minutes. Two minutes. Well, hey. You say you've used some um, fast lane for iOS and yeah. Android. No, not yet. The main thing that it brings for Android, as far as I'm aware, is things like screenshots and stuff like that. A little bit of things, but Gradle in Android does most of the hard work anyway. So it's not so necessary. Basically, Fastlane is the bit that Apple seems to be missing. Yep. Um, and I don't know why they don't just adopt it officially. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Because so, Twitter bought it. Because Twitter bought it, yeah. Apple. Exactly, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so Gradle does most of what we do. So oh, we do a lot of the stuff that we do with Fastlane, we do within Gradle directly for Android. Cool. Anything else? No. Nope. I'm amazed how complicated that is, coming from an Android background and how easy oh. it is to sign an app. and distribute it. I'm always amazed that once now they've removed that fix, fix it button, I would yeah. be lost. <laughs> well, the problem being, well, the, the thing being is it actually is a lot simpler now, but the problem <laughs> being is only simpler if you're actually interactively using Xcode. If you're trying to do it from a development, you know, a, hopefully that'll help out anybody else who's doing any kind of automated stuff, and it's all suddenly broken in the last few weeks, and it's not broken because of the SSL issue that happened last week that broke everything else in a different way. So, cool. Cheers. Thanks, Matt. Thanks.